Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. I'm Brooke. I'm Diana. And this is episode 39. Today, we will be discussing Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 2, with the theme of compassion and loyalty. We will also discuss the movie The Mule and Z for Zachariah. As a reminder, we will be releasing our podcast weekly while watching the Game of Thrones. Yay! Awesome. Before we dive in, Diana, how are you? I'm good, Brooke. Awesome. What's up? What's, what's new? Um, well, it was Easter, so that was nice. Oh, I had an yeah. uh, improv workshop on Saturday. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was really good. It was on relationships. Oh. So establishing relationships in a scene. In a scene. That's... Well, yeah, because improv is like you get up, go out, and you have to have a relationship with that person. So oh. um, we did a uh, several um, exercises, but the last one was so much fun. And everybody was so damn funny. And I think it was because we were all committed. We were all given a character to be. Okay. And everybody was so committed. Yes. And so when you're up against another person so committed and they're so committed, it's just so awesome. Oh, nice. And what was funny was that, for example, neither person knew what the other person was, but the audience knew what each person was. So oh. maybe the one person would come on knowing they were a bug and and they thought they were going against a bug exterminator. And then the other person would come in oh. and they were a customer and they thought that they were in a car lot. Oh, how funny. So the customer is thinking they're talking to a salesperson and the bug thinks they're talking to an exterminator. And it was hilarious. I mean, it was just so funny. It was so That's good. pretty cute. Now, did it work out pretty well? Like, how how long did it take to catch on to the new the other character? It doesn't matter. You just go for you it. Go and it was it. just... It, and you kind it's of... It's like improv charades. Yeah. Well, because right. you don't have to guess the other person. It's just... You're just going Committed to your scene. That's pretty and cool. doing it. I, I was, do that. I was um, their conscience. It, it, was, it was hilarious. It was so good. It was nice. Fun. I want to so. try to do that like a family game or something. Yeah. That would be so much fun. Or yeah. like maybe a cabin game, mm-hmm. you know, if you go up to Tahoe with family or extended family. That'd be really yeah. cute and fun to do. Yeah. Huh. Awesome. I love that stuff. That's cool. I'm how glad about, that you, went, you did that. How about you? How are well, you? Well, it was 420 on Saturday, which that doesn't apply to my life anymore. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, And then it was Easter, you know, the next, the following day, which was nice. And then the kids, you know, they did their Easter eggs and um, we colored them and I made food for a barbecue. It was just really mellow, but it was awesome. You know, I've got the little one. So it was David's first Easter. He was all with his little bow tie and Gemma had her beautiful Easter dress on and it was I just, saw it. It was a beautiful Easter oh, dress. Thank yeah. you. She was yeah. so proud. She was just so happy. So it was it was a nice weekend. Yeah. And then we've just been getting through the work week as oh, usual. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Since we're watching Game of Thrones and it's, you know, we're talking about the compassion and loyalty and so much has been going on. They're ramping up for their new, um, you know, challenges coming. Yes. Uh, ahead <laughs> and i'm just wondering you know just put yourself in their shoes would you fight for your country or would you be one of those to hide in the crypt hide in the crypt <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know i don't know i i you know i'd be like okay let me be a go in the crypt i'm gonna nurture everybody i'm mm-hmm. gonna make sure everybody's got their blankets i'm gonna feed you some food yeah but yeah i'm uh, yeah if i went out there i'd be dead like in two seconds probably right yeah. I'd love to be a fighter. I'd love to be a warrior. Yeah. I just don't know that I'd last very long. I don't know that I would either. And I don't know. And I think it's interesting watching this episode. I feel like people were just assuming that they're all going to die. But then there's yeah. like that little glimpse of hope. Like, oh, when this is over, you know, yeah. blah, 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 whatever happens. But at the same time, they are they start the conversation like they're going to die. So I honestly think... As much as I, I mean, I'd pr- probably be in the crypt just because I have a family, right? Yes, and young ones. Like I wouldn't be able to just leave them with whoever and be like, "I love you. We're all gonna die." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna see you ever again. Like yeah. I'd have to stay with my kids just to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. And 
It would be really hard. That would be so That's hard. the whole family the from our last week, you know, whole family loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. So now the question's on you, listeners. What would you do? Would you fight for your country or would you hide in the crypt? Let us know. We want to hear from you. We do. Follow us on our Instagram. Go to our website and tweet us. Okay, so we just saw Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 2, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. With the theme of compassion and loyalty, where did you see that in these episodes? Oh boy, well it was there were so many occurrences in this episode, but the first part that I saw where Danny loses trust and honor in her hand, Tyrion, and calls him a traitor and a fool. Really? I mean, okay, but Danny tells Tyrion if he can't help her take the Iron Throne from Cersei, she will find her another hand who can. Alrighty. Jorah defends Tyrion and tells Danny to keep him as her hand and forgive him for his mistake as she has forgiven Jorah for his mistakes. Mm-hmm. And we're also reminded that Jorah and Tyrion have their past a time where he wanted to throw Tyrion into the sea, yeah. you know, which is so interesting because he defends Tyrion and look how far they've come. And he has taken Jorah's place, his hand to Khaleesi. Mm-hmm. So at that time, he was a ch- much different time, but, you know, he was trying to, well, Tyrion, I can't, did he accidentally like, kind of like stumble upon her hand? I mean, it wasn't like he was... Was he looking for her? I don't think so. Because um, it's hard to remember. Jorah, but, yeah. he had he had him. He captured him, right? Because he saved him from those barbarians, uh-huh. and um, he brought him to Khaleesi, which I think he was trying to redeem himself. But it kind yeah. of yeah flipped on him yeah um, in a different way. So I thought that was pretty surprising how far they were and how close they have come back yeah to each other yeah because he loves her i know he does you know i actually was like well he had to go away yeah because of the whole grayscale thing she didn't well, she banish she did. him first you're right and then, you're right okay. she did she did because he yes. got the grayscale that's with right anyway, that's right oh gosh yes I remember and those crazy things in the sea yeah so yeah. it's interesting there i to- i almost forgot that they had a past Jorah and yeah. well, Tyrion. as you're talking, you're reminding me of mm-hmm. all of them. I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. Oh yeah, that happened yeah. too. <laughs> it's amazing. And you know, Danny was surprised by Jorah's change of heart about Tyrion, mm-hmm. but he says he makes mistakes and he owns them. Yeah, and he learns from them. That's good. Which is what we want from anybody, right? From anybody. I totally forgive people when they. When they say, look, I'm sorry, I did this. I'm, and there's just no excuses. They just own up to it. Right. And Tyrion does do that. He does. He's he's very respect respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, even later in the show, when they were at the strategy meeting, mm-hmm. and Danny tells Tyrion to stay in the crypt yeah. with the women and the children because yeah. he can't fight as well as the others. And she wouldn't be able to use him or his mind if he's dead yeah. afterwards. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, poor guy. He's just, you know, and he tries to defend himself. I've fought before. Right. Right. And look at the scar on his yeah. face. That uh-huh. was, you know, from. Yeah. He's got evidence. Like, he has mm-hmm. fought before. And yeah. he's he's very courageous. I think he's a decent fighter. I don't yeah. think he's, you know. She's made, she's, she's had some stabs at him, though. You know, something about um, Jon Snow not being tall enough. I and he's know. like, oh, and he's like a small person, yeah. right? So yeah. he was like, oh, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I see how you are. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's. Uh, but she does think his mind is bigger than his body. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, having a good mind is very strong. Yes. Very good asset. What about you? Well, I uh, saw the theme of compassion and loyalty between Brienne and Jamie throughout this episode. Oh, yes. But it begins when Brienne sticks up for Jamie at the council. I mean, this was pivotal. Brienne talks about Jamie sticking up for her when others tried to rape her. 
Right. And that he got his hand cut off. That's yeah, he did. In the process. Mm -hmm. And Brienne says she knows he is a man of honor. And without him, my lady, you would not be alive. He swore an oath to your mother. So this makes Sansa change her mind about Mm -hmm. him and says she trusts Brienne with her life and is willing to give Jamie a chance since she vouches for him. Mm -hmm. And then everyone in the room changes their mind. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they could have just killed Jamie right right then for everything that he's done to their families. But I felt that really showed compassion for one another because here Sansa is listening to Brienne and then John is listening to Sansa. Right. And then Danny is listening to both of them. Right. It's just a domino effect. Yeah. So... That's good that they were able to, you know, I think somebody had even made a comment like, oh, we need um, as many men as we can or as many fighters as we can. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. I can't remember exactly who said that, but Mm -hmm. it's very true. I mean, then they were were considering him such a betrayal to Danny, you know, the, and she even brought up the fact that her brother... Um, would tell her bedtime stories about how her father was slain. Yes. So I think it's pretty big of her to accept that domino effect Mm -hmm. of people backing him. But it's good. Yeah. I think, you know, it's at a point where it's very necessary to... And he is willing to, you know, risk everything to be there. Yeah. From... Cersei, Mm -hmm. his baby mama. Yeah. Um, Jamie approaches Brienne afterwards and tells her that he will be honored to serve under her command. Mm -hmm. That was brilliant. Mm -hmm. He sees her at a distance where she's watching Podrick train. Yeah. And then they talk about him a little bit. I we haven't seen Podrick for a while too. Uh So it was nice to see him and he is not the same fighter that he used to be, is what he tells Brienne. And Brienne is absolutely speechless. She just looks at him. Yeah. You know, when he tells her that he would be honored to fight under her. I know. She's like, where's this going? (laughs) You know, I think Tormund is going to be so depressed. He's going to be so jealous when he hears that. I know. But, you know, love, 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 heart, 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 go to all those. It's just an amazing, monumental scene um, for me. I really love that compassion and loyalty. Yeah. And so we also see Jamie goes to Bran and apologizes for what he did to him. He says he is different than he used to be and wonders why Bran didn't tell everyone that he tried to murder him. Mm -hmm. But Bran basically says it's fate and that he wouldn't be the three-eyed raven if it wasn't for what Jamie had done. And Jamie wouldn't be who he is today if he hadn't done what he did. Yeah. (laughs) So... I guess. <laughs> well, it is. It is fate. It's just that life takes you a certain way, right? Interesting. And you, you adapt and you change right. with what things happen. And I'm, and I had wondered how Bran was going to take it, and I had a feeling he was going to take. Oh, and I think he also says we. This is when he says, "We need another person to fight with mm. us." Okay. I thought. I think that's what that was Bran. Then. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. He's a good guy. Yeah. Or almost a guy. <laughs> Whatever you are, Bran. He's a three-eyed raven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a great scene, you know, by the tree. And it's just so peaceful. There's them one-on-one. Yeah. Because we wondered, like, where is yeah. this going to take place and yeah. how? And what? so it's perfect yeah. where they were mm-hmm. off on their own. And then after that, Tyrion and Jamie were in the courtyard talking. And many of the soldiers were, like, scowling at them and just dogging them, you know, because they're... Lannisters from King's Landing yeah. like they don't have anything why are they here but yeah. they need as many men as they can right and Jamie asked Tyrion if Daenerys is to be trusted as the new queen and Tyrion asked Jamie if Cersei is really telling the truth about her being pregnant so they didn't really answer each other when they asked each other those questions and Tyrion just said she is always good at using the truth to tell lies mm-hmm. she is so manipulative yeah and her brothers know her probably best. But still, she pulled the wool over she both their lied. eyes. Yeah. You know? Well, it's interesting how... She wasn't even in this episode, but she has such an impact. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. There's more to come. Um, ironically, Tyrion believes they will die at Winterfell without being killed by Cersei, because they're not even thinking of that. They mm -hmm. don't even know that there's an order from her for him and Jaime to be killed by Bronn. I know, so crazy. they're just like, we're going to die here. Who would have thought? We're in the yeah. north. Little did they know they have a price on their heads mm -hmm. right now. Um, I don't know. I wonder if... I don't, I, I don't feel like Bronn would go through with it. I, I think, don't know. Well, okay. He is... He's, he's a pretty cool dude. I think if he... What if he ends up in the north and he fights with the north? Like, what right. if he, in the next That's episode, That's kind of what there? I think that might happen. Because he's a good fighter, too. Yeah. He's pretty strong. So, yeah, I don't know that he'll go through with that. Yeah. Um, Danny and Sansa have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. You know that episode? Yes. That was or that scene. That was a good scene. Yeah. I, I don't know. And like Sansa's height over Danny. You know, uh -huh. Danny I think is like five foot two, and Sansa's got to be, you know, probably close to six foot. She's pretty five tall. Foot nine, maybe. Yeah. Ten. I don't know. Yeah, she's, she's tall. She's tall, like yeah. towering over her. Yeah. And there was still tension between the two in the beginning of their conversation. And it turns out that Sansa believes that men are easily manipulated by women. And Danny responds that by saying she has devoted her entire life to the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. Like saying, she this has. is my only goal. Yeah. <laughs> until she met John. And that is now she's fighting a war that belongs to him. She mm -hmm. just came to him and they met and here she is. Um, therefore, who has manipulated who? Mm -hmm. There is one question. What happens afterwards? That was a serious question. Yeah. She just put the smack down right she there. She did. Yeah. And she was like, what happens after? Sansa wants to know, after beating the war and Cersei, you know, what will happen? Danny will end up taking the, the Iron Throne. But Sansa wants to make sure that Winterfell will never bow to anyone else again after yeah. they've already been taken in the past. So what about the North? Then Tanny's like, don't touch me. I know. She just lights go over hand. Yeah. She, <laughs> because it was like they were getting so close at that point and, yep. you know, finding similar things about them, how they have in common, leading, everything. And as their hands touch, and yeah. I'm thinking, my God, are they becoming these allies? Right. And she even, they confess she confesses her love to John and yeah, the fact she, that John yeah. loves Yeah, because she says, her. you love my brother. Mm -hmm. and, and then she says, yes, I love your brother. Yeah. And yeah, but then as soon as she says, but, you know. It's like back to square one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you see that meme? No. <laughs> it has Danny's face. It's so passive aggressive. It's so funny. It's the meme like where she's smiling, but she's not really smiling. Like it's a fake yeah. smile. It's so what funny. What did the meme say? Did it say anything? Um, people were just putting their Whatever. own thoughts on it, but it was just hysterical because, you know, it was not what <laughs> what she was actually saying at that time. Okay. So. We need to figure out what we would say and then we'll get the same picture and put our own yes. spin on it. So <laughs> That's I'll find idea. that and work on that. <laughs> what else did you notice about compassion and loyalty? Anywhere else? I did. I saw it with uh, Sansa and Theon mm -hmm. and their reunion. Aww. It was so heartwarming. You know, he comes in and he talks to um, Danny mm -hmm. and Danny asks where um, his sister is right and Yara and she's fighting well she went to um, the Iron Islands right yeah. she just yes went there in her name yes I remember him saying yeah in her in your name she went to fight for you yeah. um, but I am here and I want to fight for Winterfell Lady Sansa oh my god and she runs up to him and they hug I know. so hard yeah. I felt it. They have such a relationship. I mean, um, uh, I, a relationship, but they... I thought... They, I didn't think that she would be as warm as she was to him because I felt like there were so many times when he could have helped her, but he didn't stand up Oh, my moment. goodness, though. I don't... I mean, And then he did. And yeah. then he did when he finally helped her get away. Um, that dude was crazy. I know. I know. It was horrible. I know he was, um, Theon was so, you know, under his rule. But um, 
so I was so happy to see them and I just really felt it. I mean, it's like they're, you know, they grew up kind of like brother and sister. They grew up like brother and sister and then he turned on the family. Yeah. Which then well, that's karma. Saying. That's a lot, was, right? That... Yeah, really hard on him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after he built the courage to stand up and and they, I just, I, I will always remember that scene where they left that place. You know, they're running in the snow mm-hmm. together, just escaping. Yeah. And then the dogs were running after them, you know, in the, floor, see it again. in the woods. Oh, my God. Oh, it was so hard. It was crazy. What season was that, I wonder? Um, Probably like four, five, five, I want to see it again. Yeah. They're so far, they're so far apart. Mm-hmm. I just need to rewatch everything There's again. so much information in every yes, season. Yes, I need yes. to go back and watch, yeah. watch this. I love but it. But you're right. That hug and that reunion for them was just so... Real and yeah. heartfelt. Just love right there. Mm-hmm. And just what they had gone through as victims. Right. Together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and even at the end of this episode, when they were eating or bonding, you know, getting right in the, in the evening uh-huh. during the song that Patrick was singing yeah. and just them looking at each yes, other. Yes, and like, that montage. Oh, I love it. You know, you said something key. You said they were both victims. And mm-hmm. I think you have a bond with somebody who has been through the same thing you have and knows the experience. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's why they're so close, too. Yeah. And without that experience, she wouldn't be who she is today. Oh, for sure. So unfortunately for Theon, he has to he has to revive from all his damage. But for her, yeah, you know, she didn't have any limbs taken. So that reminds me of the dog scene. Yeah. I love that scene. Mm-hmm. He was starving the dogs. Yes. And then they were hungry. Yes, Sansa. I loved it. <laughs> and I think that was her turning point, right? Yeah. Yep. Good for her. Yeah. Um, Theon also said that, you know, during the strategy meeting, yeah. that he will stay and protect Bran from the Night King. I know. I love and that. And he needed to stay because he took Winterfell mm-hmm. and he was a little, Bran was a little boy at that time when he took it from him. Yeah. So he wants to do this for him in, you know, in place of that hurt that he caused Mm -hmm. and betrayal. So he's trying to really redeem himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think is really hard to do, but he's willing to put his life on the line and he's found himself again. Mm -hmm. So I think so. I just wonder though, I'm like, "Hmm, you're going to trust Bran with him, just with him. But I'm glad that they're letting him, but I wasn't sure if they, somebody has to, and he was going to stay on his own and they're like, no, yeah. no, no. So they're trying to strategize yeah. and figure out how they were going to do that. And they're mm-hmm. like, okay, you can stay with him. Yeah. You know, who else would have been able to, honestly? Mm-hmm. You know, they need their fighters out there. And hopefully Theon can do um, what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when that time comes. Yeah. So, hey, let's talk about Arya. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. So when Arya visits Gendry in the workshop Uh and she checks on the progress of her weapon that he's making for her, Gendry is all sweaty and dirty. His muscles, his pecs are popping. And she was just ready to eat him up. She had those eyes just lit on him, right? She just, he seems to underestimate her strength. Right? He has no idea. And her fighting abilities by the way he is talking to her about the war that's ahead. Mm -hmm. He tells her that she'll be safer in the crypt. And he knows that she wants to fight, but the White Walkers are different, he says. They're really bad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's like, really? That's what you're going to come up with? They're really bad? What do they smell like? What do they look like? What do they... How do they act you know she wants to know because she knows what she's capable of and she shows him a sneak peek of her accurate fighting strategy when she's throwing the daggers the the dragon glass Uh and they're like it's like a target on top of each other right yeah that point it's like it's like oh my gosh he is so impressed yeah and he seems a little bit turned on (laughs) and then he just gets right to work to make her weapon for her i'll make it i'll make it right away right away oh let uh-huh he (laughs) is just ready for her so i want to bring up and speaking about aria 
um, I've been reading all kinds of articles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many theories out there. And one of them was that she's preparing to put on the um, Night King's face, possibly to maybe rule these White Walkers. I don't know. Or no, no. Wait, wait, is it that or she? No, no, maybe she's preparing to be a White Walker to get to the Night King. Um. Something like that. Um, because they were saying, oh, why is she asking? What do they smell like? How do they move? What You know, what are they like? And I'm like, ooh, I like that theory. Not that it will be true, but I, I like thinking well, who about knows? that. Maybe it is. Maybe all she has to do is get a White Walker, you know, skin its face off and pull an alpha on the night king oh yeah i really i i it might be john it might be somebody else but i would love if aria was the person to kill uh the night king in a way but I, you know i could see it being john or somebody well but. there is talk about john having yeah. a relation to the night king somehow uh -huh. i mean i don't know if that is um, Rhaegar Targaryen as the Night King. Like, mm -hmm. who is the Night King? But I have heard that he is possibly an ancestor to John. Pardon me, why take a drink of my wine? Why no? <laughs> yum, 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 yum. So I don't know. Who could it be? I'm. I know. Well, well, we'll find out. That's soon assuming enough, if they get to him. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So true. <gasps> oh my God. So later on, Arya and Gendry. Have sex. Ooh. Somebody. <laughs> I can't sing that song. I was just about to, and I'm like. You should have. We, no, we banned that person's music oh. in our house. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. We will yeah. no speak of the name. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> basically, you know, to her, she's like, we're going to die so soon, so I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And it was a little awkward, but I'm so glad she got to experience that. You know, when she takes off her shirt, he notices her scar on her rib cage. Yeah. But then I thought it was kind of funny. It's like, of all things, that's what you're going to look at when right. this girl takes her shirt off in front of you. But, you Well, know. it was <laughs> real. So Gabe and I, we watched this episode and he's like, he just looks at her as that little girl from season one. He, Gabe had to turn away. He couldn't watch it because he's just. Yes. She, he's that's like, why she's it was grown up. Yes. You know? That's why it was a little awkward. But yeah. I also read that the actor felt that way he felt um odd about the love scene because he says i've known her since she was a young girl but at the same time i did not want to disrespect her as a woman now which i thought oh my god you're such a nice guy so he had to like you i understand know, treat her as a woman right now and not well, hey. <laughs> and kind of erase that mm -hmm. uh, when he knew her when she was nine or I ten i mean that's years his old. role and he has to do it and so. i did read that she started this uh, all of this when she was about nine or ten, and she's mm -hmm. currently, I think she's supposed to be 18 on the show, but she's okay. actually 22 in real life. Okay. So. That's a long time. Um, I know, right? Dang. So. It's interesting when you see people grow up and you're like, what? You're not supposed to be doing that? I know. <laughs> she's a little girl. But you know what? Better now than never. Do exactly. it, girl. You're right. Yes. You don't know. So. Yeah. You've got to. And that maybe that was sort of an excuse for her, too, right? Because she wants, I mean, you know. I don't know. Gendry is looking pretty yeah. hot. I mean, he was looking <laughs> hot in that workshop. I was like, wow, you looking good. So good for you, Arya. Yeah. You know, Tormund mm -hmm. thoroughly cracks me up. He's so awesome. He's so funny when he gets there and he hugs <laughs> Jon Snow and yeah. everything. And he turns around and he's like, where's the big woman? Yep. <laughs> so funny That's so and then awesome. later on he's like when they're at the round table he's all well we all might die but at least we'll die together right and, and he just, looks, yeah. yeah it's just one liners are such a crack up i know and then when they're all sitting oh. there in that parlor yeah and he brings up uh, drinking breast milk from a giant lady yeah that was that was so funny it, but it 
But what came next was incredible. I mean, he finds out that Brienne is not a knight because she is a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's against tradition and says if he were a king, he would knight her 10 times. (laughs) I think he'd do a lot more to her 10 times over. I think that's exactly Mm -hmm. what he was thinking. Yeah. Oh, but it was just, it was, he's a crack up. I actually, I didn't know how much I liked him, but I really do. And then... At, in this whole scene, Jamie really feels that compassion and loyalty to Brienne and mm-hmm. says that he's able to knight a knight and asks her to kneel as he goes forth with the ceremony. And this is like monumental to Brienne. Yeah. She is overwhelmed with pride and emotion. And it's so awesome. One, because it's something she is extraordinarily proud of. And because it is Jamie doing the honors and she adores him. Yeah. It's also interesting, though, because she was like, I didn't even ask to be a knight. And then she looks at Podrick. Yeah. You know. And and he like kind of gives her the because she really does. But I think she thought it was it would never happen. Well, her confidence level is, you know, like she's when they call her when he calls her Sir Knight. Brienne, or yes. and then she's uh-huh. like, oh, she can't because she's a lady, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then, you know, it's just like, I think that she she just has that um, self-confidence mm-hmm. she's carried forever. Yeah. Knowing that she can't get that extra stripe on her mm-hmm. sleeve. Yeah. Because of her gender, which is hallelujah. Thank you. We have a woman I know. knight. I know. I Hello. love it. I know. I love it. Moving on up. So Leona Mormon and Jorah mm-hmm. are cousins, and yeah. he tries to convince her to stay safely in the crypt. He looks at her like a child. I mean, she is a child, but she's a leader. She's a very strong leader. Yes. And she doesn't feel the same as him at all. She is so incredibly brave. And she tells him that she has pledged to fight for the North and she will fight. I'm like, you go, girl. She's so feisty. I know. She's strong. Yeah. Like, I believe her 100%. Yeah. I mean, she's got such leadership qualities that people mm-hmm. will, like you said, you will believe her. Yeah. But she has that following yeah. with her people. Yeah. And when Samwell approaches Jora. And he sees them and he stands back and he waits and because he doesn't want to interrupt her strong stance. I mean, she's taking her stand Mm -hmm. and she is a strong figure and well respected. She carries herself extremely confident and her people look up to her. After all, she is a girl. And by the way, how old is she? I don't even know. I don't know how old she is. Yeah. So she is so smart and she has mature mannerism. I mean, Mm -hmm. the way that she speaks. She does. She's so confident. She sternly says... She's like an old soul, just in a small body. That's all. Like, who taught her this? Yeah. But she sternly tells Jorah, she says, we're done here. Looks back at Jorah and says, I wish you good fortune, cousin. I know. Like, who says that at whatever age you are, little child? I love how she says that, too. I know. All with her armor on, Mm -hmm. you know, and her Mm -hmm. hair down and Mm -hmm. her innocent face, but her strong, like, her little... I love her face. Mm -hmm. She just has such good characteristics. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's a great character. Yeah. Great actress. Great actress Uh for this character. Like, where'd you you come from? Where'd you find her? Yeah. So Samuel, he gives Jorah the sword. Sword. (laughs) 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 He gives Sam, or he gives Jorah the sword called Heartsbane. Yes. And his it's his family's sword. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't feel that he is worthy of the sword. And he tells Jorah that his father is the one who showed him how to be a man. Yeah. Jorah's dad. Yeah. So at the um, Castle Black. And he felt that it's right to give the Valerian steel sword to Jorah. And Jorah's like, you have a family. You can protect them. But. You know, he accepts the sword and he's totally honored, which I think is really, you know, a good um, move on both of their parts. I mean, yeah. you know, because like he said, he has that relationship with his dad and Jorah didn't really have that relationship. It didn't seem like right. he had a relationship with his father the way that Sam and everybody else did. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's awesome that he's able to have that I know bond yes. with Sam. Yeah. So I love that scene. 
I know all the scenes, yeah. <laughs> like every well, scene has an impact. Yeah, of some especially sort. now because like everyone, like in the fir- the first episode of this season, it was reuniting and like everybody's mm-hmm. like, "Hey, how you doing?" High yes. five. And now it's like, oh, "Okay, this I, might you know. be the last mm-hmm. time." Yep. Which is amazing to me, mm-hmm. you know. Everybody, mm-hmm. I mean, so many of them think this. We're, we're we might very well die. I'm sure most of the times when they go into battle, they aren't thinking that. I'm sure they're thinking I could die, but I think this time they're going in like, uh, I might really die. Yeah. That's, yeah. So it just shows how brave I all mean, of them really are. 100,000 White Walkers headed their way. I know. And they're going to try and fight the best that they can. Yep. So. Okay. So uh-huh. let's talk about the big reveal. Yeah. So John is down in that crypt. After he's been avoiding her for, like, yes, the past. Yes, <laughs> I know. He keeps getting everywhere yeah. they are. He keeps getting up yeah. and leaving. She's all like, what, where, what? where'd he go? <laughs> Why is he leaving? It's so funny because at first I'm like, I just thought he was ignoring her. Do you know in the beginning of the episode, I had forgotten that he found out who he was and hadn't told her. Oh, really? I, it's just because so much is going on, I was paying attention to all of that. I'm like, what's he doing? What's happening? I'm like, oh, he's yeah. avoiding her. Right. You know, when Samwell tells them, you know, have you told her yet? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't think he was looking forward to that. But, you know, he is down there in the crypt. I didn't even know if that he was going to tell her. Honestly, I thought he was I didn't either. like, let that go down. I thought I... I and I don't know. He knew he was going to tell her because he didn't know she was going to go down there where he was at, Feeling, looking at his mm-hmm. mother. And then when she came and said about her brother and what he did to her, and then that's when John says, "No, he loved they, her. Mm-hmm. They were secretly married, yeah, and they had a child, yeah, you know." And starts to begin to tell her the whole story, right? And. He says, my name, my real name is Aegon Targaryen. Yeah. Wow. I know that he's, yeah. And she's just like, oh, dang. Yeah. And she finds it interesting that it was his brother and his best friend (laughs) that tell him this. Hmm. She's like, where's the DNA test? Call Maury up in here. Maury. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Get them bones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to do a little DNA test right now. Because she says, you know, you have a claim to the Iron Throne. Yeah. So what does that mean, Danny? You giving it up Mm -hmm. another way? Yeah. Is she? But I don't know. Then they're interrupted and they all go uh, running out. Yeah, to, to the horns. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to bring up another theory that I've read. Yes. Uh, you may have heard this too. Mm. That th- uh, the Night King and all the White Walkers are going to King's Landing to kill Cersei and get all those troops. Oh, they split up? I don't know. I don't think they split up. I think this is what I've read, that they're really going there and everybody here is thinking they're going to die. And they're really not because they're not really coming for them or, may, you know, whatever it is. Because what, after I read that, because I, I watched this episode twice and you see Tyrion and, and John and Danny standing there looking, you know, and you, you hear people coming. OK, somebody's coming. Right. Um, And then you see the White Walkers and they're staring at um, light in the back. And, you know. Yeah. Well, we don't know what they're really staring at. So many times people do that. You think it's what we think it is, right? So you think that they're staring at Winterfell. Yeah. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I like this theory, too. Oh. So, and people were saying, well, uh, so here Cersei was thinking, oh, let them die. And then they'll, you know. And then I'll deal with them. But maybe they're going there first. Where are they? That is true. We haven't really seen them. Where the heck are you? Now that I'm... Gosh, I didn't even think about that. Right. Me neither. I was thinking they're there. Yeah. So it's just a theory. And I just thought I'd bring it up. Well, no. By the time this is released... Well, come on, Sunday. (laughs) The only time I want my week to go faster is when Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. Like, come on. So what other things did you notice in these episodes? 
Oh, when Davos and Gilly meet that little girl with their burn on her face. Yeah. And they're reminded of Stannis Baratheon's daughter, Shireen, who was burned alive. I liked her. Poor little sweetheart. I couldn't huh? believe that part. You no, know, Shireen taught Davos and Gilly how to read. Mm-hmm. Both of them. She was so sweet. She was. With her little toys, you know, that she had with yeah. Davos. So, I know, that was really hard. That was so hard to watch. I didn't... I know. How does someone give up their daughter? Well, he was manipulated by that freaking red witch who I can't yeah. stand. But still... I know. You're right. She had, yeah. like, yeah. demonic, like, yeah. powers. I mean, <laughs> remember when <laughs> Arya asked Gendry yes, how many yes, women he, he's yeah. been with? And he was like, you know, he answered and then... She, um, he mentioned the, the leeches, and she's like, have you ever done that before? He was like, had leeches on me? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> Freaking crazy lady. So, yeah, that was that was terrible. Um, also, that when the Night King, or Bran had said that the Night King is coming for him, mm-hmm. and he knows this because he has already tried with the Three-Eyed Raven, and he left a mark on him. Yeah. So he could follow him. Yeah. And what the Night King wants, Bran knows this, he wants an endless night to erase all memory equals death. Which is death. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess. It just, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I what would there be for death? Like, what do they, it's like Thanos. Like, what do you, why did you, why? You know, and just, I, that's what you were created the quiet place? to do like, and just that's your goal what errors yeah. like don't you like I, I don't know if i were to be that evil villain then i think i would like to at least have my puppets and like make them do th- like why have nothing now i gotta do all the work myself <laughs> okay so this whole world's falling apart I'll, and i'm only here by myself anyways <laughs> <laughs> um masande and gray worm they are not feeling quite accepted by the North. Yeah. And with the last episode that you had speculated, like, mm-hmm. where are all the people of color? Yeah. And they seem even more alienated because, yeah. you know, people are just like, the kids are not right. paying them any attention, uh, you know, yeah. and they're just like, they just feel like after this, they need to head to the beach because once da- Daenerys takes the Iron Throne, there's mm-hmm. nothing for them. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, but, yeah, you know. I love that he asks her, do you want something else, you know? Aww. And then she basically says yes. Yeah. And she says, but we're peaceful people. And he says, well, we're um, fighting people or something like that. So basically, we'll take care of you. Yeah. So that's cute. I know. It's very, very sweet. Yeah. And they kiss. Yeah. The end. What What else did you see? <laughs> the end. The end. Um, so I thought it was funny that Bran was all alone in his chair out in the snow. I mean, really. I mean, think about that. I mean, you just it's a picture, just this kid in his, in his chair. Yeah. I mean, like, how do you get there? Yeah, I'm like, how do you get there? Hodo. Hodo. Hodo's not around. So how are you getting around these days? But it was beautiful. I just love that white tree and red leaves. It's yeah. just so beautiful. The contrast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um that's like my favorite setting. Um, also, Podrick's voice. Mm-hmm. Whoa. I love it. It was awesome. And I love the song he sang. So a musical Easter egg from the books. And it's called Jenny's Song. And it's also sung by Florence and the Machines in the closing credits. So I don't know. It could be a foreshadowing of what is to come for John and Daenerys because it's about Duncan Targaryen giving up the Iron Throne for love. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. I just really love that song. I thought it was amazing. It was nice. I want to hear the Florence and the Machines version now that um, I didn't didn't catch that. Did you not listen to the end? I did, but you know my house. It is not quiet. Well, it stuck out to me because it was different. You know, because I had it on, and I'm like, wait, what's this song? I didn't know at that moment it was Florence and the Machines, but Mm -hmm. I listened to it, because I'm like, oh, there's a reason they let this song go. 
I mean, you know, key, play it instead of the normal one. Oh, so right. So then later on, I looked it up because I just, I just love um, when um, he sang it. So, and then I found out uh, when Podrick sang it. And so then I found out that Florence and the Machines. And there's like an official video out on it. So Awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh the what? video is a montage of all. Came I with... mean, it's so it it shows like from the beginning, like when Ned is decapitated oh. and when. Did you check it out on grit... YouTube? Yeah. Is it produced by Florence in the mission? The video? Yeah, it's for. I think it's. I don't know if they sang it for. I don't know how it works. Okay, you know, I'll check look, it out. But there, it I is an official see. video. It is okay. But Game of Thrones and Florence and the Machines. It's you know nice. So it's great. Maybe they're fans and they're like, sure, we'll sing on your. Yeah, <laughs> we'll sing this cool. for you. So they didn't need Ed Sheeran this episode. No, they, they did had not. <laughs> <laughs> so Brooke, yes. Why do you love Game of Thrones? Well, you know what? I sat on this and I was like, why do I? Love Game of Thrones. And I say, I love this show because the morality and the consequences that are being confronted since season one. Mm -hmm. They are able to, you know, keep the screenplay and the consistency of the storyline. And it hasn't veered off to an unforgiving place. And, you know, they haven't lost fans over it. Yeah. This show knows how to keep the fans at the edge of their seats, and I am extremely committed to this show. And I love that about mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. Yeah. What about you? Why do you love Game of Thrones? Well, to tell you the truth, I almost didn't watch this show in the very beginning because I did not like the way women were treated. And I may have said this before, but I went back to it. And I can't get enough. Uh, you know, this episode it alone in itself showcased all these strong women. And it's so empowering. I mean, each of them show their strength. Danny, Sansa, Arya, Brienne, Masande, and Liana Mormont. I mean, who, you know, she's adamant about fighting the White Walkers. Yep. I mean, every single one of them show that strength. Even that little girl. So I, I just love that here we were in the first season where women were naked and being raped and, you the know, brothels. having, to, yes, yeah. the brothels and just everything else. And here we are to these warrior women. So yeah. I just really love where we end up. Good observation. <laughs> that is so true. So. The first three seasons were super nude. Yeah. And I'm like, kids... You got to go. You can't watch this episode. And like having to kick them out all the time was getting really hard yeah. when I'm trying to marathon yeah. my dang show. I know. And they're exactly. like, can we come out now? Can we open our eyes now? Yeah. No. <laughs> got to put mute on the surround sound. You know how hard it is to put mute on the surround sound? Just kidding. All right. You can't just put mute. You have to like <laughs> block it out. <laughs> Cover your, put those blanket over your head. <laughs> I can't breathe. Oh, gosh. Anyways, yes, I do love that. It's really evolved into something really respectable. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we're at the segment and the award goes to... Dun, 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 dun. So what was your favorite quote, character, or moment in this episode? My favorite character is actually Jamie Lannister. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Facing his he's past. So cute. Yeah, he's he did good. He's I doing really his, well. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's I okay. just loved all his looks in like when he looked at Tormund with a slight smile, they were just perfect looks. Go oh, ahead. and when Danny calls him out on being the one handed man, how do you expect to fight yeah. you know, like yeah. oh, a knight with one hand? Yeah. Thanks. I got this one hand because I was protecting <laughs> this other knight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Um, so he's faced his past courageously, confronting all the people that he may never had mm -hmm. if the dead weren't coming after all humanity. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to sacrifice the love of his life, Cersei, in order to keep, in order to help and fight for what is right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's making his way. And I love that about him and what he's doing for the people yeah on this show and so who is your favorite character quote 
or moment? Well, mine is when Brienne is knighted. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jamie performs a ceremony and says, In the name of the warrior, I charge you to be brave. In the name of the father, I charge you to be just. In the name of the mother, I charge you to defend the innocent. Now arise, Brienne of Tarth. A knight of the seven kingdoms. Awesome. Oh, my God. Awesome. Brienne has tears in her eyes. And then that smile. She has the biggest smile. Mm-hmm. It was so real and full of emotion. And I love that they all got up and clapped and just shot shot they each shook you know nodded their head is what i meant to say so shook and nod yeah (laughs) shanod they nodded just like they were so proud and it was so deserved and um in the after you know how they have that um where david benioff and db weiss talk about the episode Mm -hmm. the showrunners and the writers um they love the idea so much that they named the episode after it. So oh, good. I thought that that was so cool. So monumental. Yeah. That's great. So, Brooke, what are you currently watching? Well, this week I watched, um, well, I, f- I recently discovered a show on PBS, Surprise, Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> wow. And it's called Frontline. And it's just different stories of events that happen around the world. Mm-hmm. And the one that I... Uh, came across was about a huge topic, and it was about abortion. But it's really interesting what I learned from this um, show, because they PBS did a documentary on this topic back in the 70s or 80s, uh-huh. and um, the, it was, but they were focusing on pro-life and, you know, pro-choice, but what I thought was really interesting about the pro-life was that um, you know, if you give a person or if you say pro life, you know, you kind of have to take care of that life. So basically, you know, all these pro life people were just like, yeah, have the baby. But then people were like, and then what? What do, what do I? I can't take care of a baby. So this doctor started this program back in the eighties, and he was taking care of the pregnant women, housing them giving, you know, giving them their medical treatments, they would have the baby and then they would um, house the the mother and the child mm-hmm. and take care of them. And so they documented all these current events of mothers and newborn babies being, you know, housed and cared for and they have food and, you know, room and board and all of that. And I thought that was really amazing to see that these women, you know, who have really challenging lifestyles Mm -hmm. who went the pro-life and their babies were not all perfect you know they some of them had issues some of them didn't the mothers had issues some of them didn't but they were being cared for their lives were cared for and so i think that's really important and it was really important for me to see that Mm -hmm. in the choices of life versus choice so Mm -hmm. that was something that i just never even knew about so I learned something. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to continue to watch this show. I don't know exactly when it airs. It was aired on Tuesday, so I'm assuming that it'll air every Tuesday. But I will stay tuned, and I'll let you all know what is happening with that show yeah. the next time I see it. It was really good. Um, as far as movies go, I stayed up really late on 420, and I watched Z for Zachariah. And uh, my son told me about this book, but I think the book and the movie are not the same. So Z for Zechariah, the movie, was a post-apocalyptic movie, and the actors were Margot Robbie, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and Chris Pine. And it was just the three of them, and it was like some radioactive nuclear something had happened. Mm. Yeah. And so it wasn't like zombies or, you know, but like if you were in a certain part of the area or if you touched water or if you, you know, consumed more radiation, you would just get sick and then eventually die. Mm -hmm. And so this character, Margot Robbie, she lived on a farm. She had, you know, vegetation. She had a house, a well for water. And then Chiwetel, Chiwetel Ejiofor, they met and they started to cohabit 
And then, you know, they built this amazing relationship. Well, then Chris Pine comes along and, you know, he's already, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor has already made his, you know, space with Margot Robbie. Yeah. And then now they have to figure out what to do with Chris Pine. And so they become this, like, um, love triangle, basically, in this radioactive apocalypse movie. Wait, is this a current movie? It was in 2017 or 18. Oh, okay. So current. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it was on my, uh, maybe it was Showtime or HBO, and I would say I would give it a four, and then... Whoa, that's yeah, low. It, 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 out of what? Five. Oh, okay. Yeah, it I was, was decent. Okay, I thought it was like out of ten. No, no, like, no, yeah. That's low. Okay. Yeah, it was, you know, yeah. it was it was all right. It wasn't, I mean, because um, it was believable, like mm-hmm. what would you do, like so survivalist yeah. and all of that, and then also with that little twist of the love thing going on, and I don't know how emotional I would be in apocalypse yeah. but apparently people still have needs yeah. and jealousy of course. yeah so of course I yeah. would possibly yeah. recommend it if you yeah. felt like I, checking that out like something I might want to watch yeah and then I also watched the mule yeah which I think you did too right I did the mule is a 2018 crime drama produced directed and stars Clint Eastwood along with Bradley Cooper um I like this movie mm-hmm. uh, more than I thought I would I mean, he plays an award-winning horticulturist. Horticulturist. Hold it. Whoa. Winning horticulturist. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my God! He plays an award-winning horticulturist. I still can't say it. Okay, you know, a guy with flowers and um, plants. Four twenty. <laughs> <laughs> who is in financial ruin and estranged from his ex-wife and daughter, but still has a connection with his granddaughter. And to make money, he takes up being a drug mule for the cartel while trying to avoid the DEA. And I've got to say, Clint makes good movies, and I I would recommend this one. Yeah, I thought it was great. And I think it's also really great that he's able to capture the audience he does. In he this is. time in his life, yes. you know? He's the 80s. He's so awesome. He's I playing a 90-year-old, by the way. Yeah, he's but, awesome. But that's what I thought. I thought, man, you're in your 80s and you can still grab a hold. I was totally captivated by it. I mean, I saw, I thought I've seen a similar movie uh, recently, but this one was just so much better because I think because it was his connection with his family and everything. And yeah. He's a good actor, he's good director. Good actor. Yeah. Yeah. And I he never, took, he takes risks yes. in films, you mm-hmm. know, and he pushes the envelope. Yeah. But it's like the tone of the movie is that he doesn't go. That's what I love far, about him. He's right? always been, what's so funny is he's able to kind of lay back, not be a really loud or big person, Sly. but can really pull you in. Yeah. I, I never have given him enough credit. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I told you, like, those Dirty Harry movies and the Spaghetti Westerns. My mm-hmm. husband would always watch them. And I'm like, oh, man, Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Make, Make my, my day. day. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. So five out of five. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's our show. Thanks for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in, and we hope something we said today resonated with you and gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity, or inspiration. Please subscribe to our podcast and tell a friend. We would love more members of our TV club. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and Instagram. We need your feedback. We'll be uploading a new episode Tuesday, May 7th. Next show will be on Games of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 3. You can find our website listed in our show notes. See you next time. Bye. Bye.